Today is Tuesday, November 21st, AD 2023. This is the Africa Review in 5, written by Paul Schleilein and presented by Yamikani Katunga. The Greatest Defense Against Poverty Is there a correlation between broken homes and poverty? Do the two go hand in hand? Can the strengthening of the home decrease poverty in a society? The answer to all of these questions is yes. In 2014, the Institute for Family Studies ranked countries by how likely children are to live with two parents. From 94% of children in Jordan to just 36% in South Africa, none of the top 20 countries with the highest percentages of two-parent homes are found in the top 50 of nations with the highest percentage of their population below the poverty line. In other words, it is nearly impossible to find poor countries with a high percentage of two-parent homes. This doesn't mean all wealthy countries have high percentages of two-parent homes, or that all poor countries have low percentages of two-parent homes, but it does show that countries with high percentages of two-parent homes are less likely to be poor. Scripture gives many provisions for alleviating poverty, such as a robust work ethic, financial wisdom, small government, and anti-corruption laws. But nothing can do more to alleviate the problem of poverty than a biblical family structure. Consider these five reasons. First, in healthy homes, parents provide for their children. A glut of modern statistics confirms what Scripture has always taught. Two-parent homes give greater economic security to society and the family. Specifically, God calls husbands and fathers to work hard in providing for their homes. God told Adam, By the sweat of your face ye shall eat bread. Scripture urges men to work with their hands, for if they are not willing to work, neither shall they eat. Paul says that if anyone does not provide for his family, He is worse than an unbeliever. It follows then that when husbands and fathers are absent to provide, a society will plummet into poverty. Second, in healthy homes, children help provide for their parents in old age. Scripture never calls on government to provide for the elderly. This lead anchor will pull down a nation's economy. On the contrary, according to 1 Timothy 5.4, It is pleasing in the sight of God when children or grandchildren make some return to their parents. There is a real sense in which children owe the ones that gave them life. Societies will flourish when their citizens honor their father and mother by helping care for them financially. Third, in healthy homes, parents should leave an inheritance to their children. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Righteous societies succeed and save so that the next generation is better off. Healthy homes are in the best position to bless their children and grandchildren. Conversely, wicked societies indulge themselves in the present and leave debt for the future so that their children and grandchildren must pay their fines. Fourth, in healthy homes, Active mothers can invest significantly more time into their children than single mothers. Mothers working at home improve the nation's economy because the immense time they invest in their children is more likely to produce citizens that benefit society. Contrary to what the world tells her, a working mother can't do it all. She cannot work a full-time job and devote to her children the warmth and wisdom a stay-at-home mother can provide. But a stay-at-home mother is only possible with a breadwinner husband. Fifth, in healthy homes, active fathers improve every area of their children's lives. Like King David with Solomon, active fathers pass on their vocation and skills, giving their children a head start in life. Like Job with his children, active fathers take responsibility for the moral decisions of the family, improving the character of the home. Like Jethro with Moses, Active fathers protect their children from making foolish choices, such as marrying the wrong spouse, or attending the wrong school, or entering the wrong vocation. All of these examples carry significant financial ramifications in a society. 
This is why the downstream consequences of safe sex propaganda in government schools bring so much catastrophe. Safe sex fuels hookup culture. Hookup culture leads to premarital sex. Premarital sex leads to pregnancies, which leads to single parent homes, which leads to poverty. The cycle continues for generations. Nothing can do more to alleviate the problem of poverty than a biblical family structure. Families must prompt it. Churches must preach it. Governments must promote it. And that's it for the Africa Review in 5 on this Tuesday, November 21st in the year of our Lord 2023. Subscribe to the Missionary Minds podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I'm Yamikani Katunga. Be not wary in well-doing.